on his feet. You guys saw it again today with all the 11 on 11 work we did, um, flipping coverages on him and just trying to make it hard on him. Um, and it's going to be no different. So he's he's going to get the same same action. You know, I was talking to Mike on the field. We make it so chaotic in practice that we just can't help but feel like the game's going to be slower for him. Um, so we're, we're we're excited about what he's been able to get exposed to, and, uh, and now it's just a matter of doing our best to give him all the indicators possible so he can make a pre-snap decision so he can get the ball where it needs to go. D'Angelo, I imagine you subscribe to this theory of really giving oh. it to the young rookie on defense, so he's ready for game action, maybe it even feels slower once it actually starts. Oh, absolutely. I mean, giving it to any, any young football player or anybody on your roster, that's how you get better. Iron sharpens iron. And so, yes, to hear Rob Sala talk about, look, we, we, we make it so hard in practice that games are easy. That's how it's supposed to be. You can guarantee Sam Darnold didn't have it super hard on him in practice. And I point that out because I say when they were running those all out blitzes and he was like, man, you know, I, I didn't know what was going on. I'm sitting at home like, dude, you got to like break some type of out route or mm -hmm. something. You can't just sit there in zero coverage and let your man run deep. And so, yes, this is how it's supposed to be. I remember Mike Shanahan used to make us go at it in practice. And it was times that you know, we didn't want to be out there, but we fought as hard as we could. And it was even times that we as starters would go over to the scout team and beat up on the starting receivers and all those guys because we <laughs> felt like, look, mm -hmm. they need this kind of work. This is the kind of work they need. Um, you know, we shortened up practices. We put groups on different fields to make sure that we got good on good so that come game time, they were ready to roll, you know, and I point that out because it was Robert Griffin III. It mm -hmm. was his year that we split those practices up and guys were like, man, we're taking way too many reps. And coach is like, no, I need the ones on the ones and the twos can go down there, mm -hmm. but we got to make sure this young guy is ready to play football for us. So mm -hmm. that's a matter of philosophy as well, because a lot of times the, the ones will go up against the twos on defense and vice yeah. versa, which leads me to Justin Fields, who we've been talking about a bunch. I think Justin Fields is going up against the number ones now. He's a scout team quarterback, folds the three. So if anything, whereas we're frustrated that Justin Fields might not be starting right away, we know that in practice he's going up against Khalil Mack, he's going mm -hmm. up against Eddie Goldman, mm -hmm. he's going up against Roquan Smith. Justin Fields, while we're watching these preseason games, is in the practices going up against the number one Bears defense, and they're coming at him, and he has to run that scout team and do as best job as he can. I bring that up because I remember Mahomes was always going up against that number one Chiefs defense that first season where Alex Smith was the starter. And that's a philosophy of, hey, you take your rookie quarterback, you let him learn by doing it in practice against our friendly fire as opposed to throwing him into the field and throwing him to the mix that first week against the Aaron Donalds and the Jalen Ramseys and whatever else. Trust me, these rookies, no matter what it is, they're going to get their reps in practice. Mm -hmm. It's just a different matter of philosophy. <laughs> Whether you want to do it that way with Zach Wilson, ones on ones, let's go. Or it's, hey, Justin Fields, you're going to run the scout team, but you're going to see it all playing up against the number one defense. And who was standing there when Alex Smith and Patrick Mahomes were doing that? Matt Nagy was <laughs> standing yep. right there. Um, I think the Wilson thing's fascinating. I agree with the philosophy. It's like, uh, why do baseball players put that weight on their back before they swing it? So when they get up there, it's actually easier and lighter. And I think the Wilson thing that jumps out is the joint practices with the Packers. I mean, they, they went two days against Rodgers and Jair Alexander and all those good starters. And from everything you read about it, like, the Jets got their clocks cleaned, you know? But, like, that's even better than a joint practice. I just wonder, like, is Salah old school? Like, D'Angelo, you mentioned Mike Shanahan. Mike Shanahan was a head coach in the 80s. I mean, then literally the 1980s, he was a head coach. So I don't know if that still exists in the era of cell phone breaks and more seriously, injury concern and resting starters and wide receivers who don't want to practice. So all this, like, let's go hard on everybody, that's great. I just don't know if it's kind of a dying breed and if Salah is a call back to a different era. Have you changed your temperature on the Jets leading up to this first game of the that. season? What? Yeah. I just like, I always follow your roller coaster. Well, what Kay's referring to is a matter of weeks ago, we'd say, what do we think about the Jets? And I'd be like, ah, go get a wild card. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Sala and it. Are you more with me and Peter now? Well, I think it was a little disingenuous before. I think I've always been with you guys. <laughs> but I, there's a spirit on this show of, hey, everyone can yeah. win. If you look at their roster, it's 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 lacking a lot. And I, I look, you see Sala and you see Wilson. You say, this is going to be fun. We can get to nine wins. I don't know how they're going to get to Tell nine. me what you want to see out of that kid, <laughs> Zach Wilson, then. Toughness more than anything, like especially like there's a whole factor with Wilson that has nothing to do with football. It has to do with New York and has to do with the media. I want him to be tough. I want him to do the Eli thing where he gets his nose bloodied and gets mm -hmm. up and then has a cool quote after the after the game. I just want him to keep getting up and keep throwing. Like even if they go 
four and 13 or whatever the math works out. I just want him to keep up, shut up, and toughen up, and he'll be great. I promise you there will be at least one or two highlight passes from Zach Wilson, no matter how I many want. times. Wow plays. He might be sacked 60, 70 times. We don't know. I mean, that's Derek Carr, David Carr numbers, but mm -hmm. he will have one of those freakish throws where you're like, all right, I see the arm talent, and there is reason for optimism. Are we, are we two kids gloving them? Should we expect more from the Jets? I mean, I think the Jets are going to compete. You know, now, 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 how does that translate to wins? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I think they'll compete. I think you'll see a much different football team because of the attitudes from their coaches yes. um, that they'll kind of bring onto the football field. I think they'll feel like they can go in there and win games. They got. Do you think Deshaun Watson and the Dolphins will light them up when they play in the division? <laughs> Do we think that the Dolphins? I think 